This video is about chapter 8, and in this chapter, we'll talk about linear regression, drawing a line of best fit through our data. Okay? Before you can understand the line of best fit, you have to understand what a residual is. So we'll start by talking about what residuals are, and we'll end by talking about something called the coefficient of determination. So residuals. Our goal in this chapter, again, is to draw a line of best fit that goes through the scatter plot. Okay? A residual is the difference between the observed value and its predicted value. Okay? Uh, mathematically, you'll take the point that comes from the data, which we'll call y, and subtract from that our predicted, or what comes from our model or our line of best fit, which would be y hat. Okay, in this unit, um, hats will come from the model, okay, meaning our line of best fit. Okay, it will not surprise you to know that points that um, are above the line have a positive residual, and points that are below the line have a negative residual. Okay, it's a way of measuring how different each point is from the line of best fit that we've drawn so far. Now, if we take those residuals and square them, it makes them all positive, or zero if they're exactly on the line. Okay? The line of best fit, as we define it, is the line for which the sum of the squared residuals is smallest. Okay? That'll take points that are really far from the line and overemphasize those, and points that are really close will underemphasize those, and that'll give us the line of best fit. Okay? It's frequently called the least squares regression line because we are squaring all the residuals and we want the line that has the smallest um, of those squared residuals. Okay? This sounds really complicated, but actually turns out to be pretty simple because there's some mathematics that simplifies um, for us. Okay? The least squares regression line will go through the origin of the standardized graph and have the slope of the correlation coefficient, okay? So what that tells us is that the slope of this standardized graph have a slope of the correlation coefficient, okay, which is a really nice finding, okay? Now, um, because it goes through the origin of the standardized graph with the original variables, um, we know that our least squares regression line will go through the point x bar, y bar, the mean of the x's and the mean of the y's, okay? That locks us into one exact point that the graph must go through, which is a really convenient thing to have, is an anchor point to know where the graph's going to go, okay? And the slope is related to the correlation coefficient, um, but there's more to it than that, and that's the standard deviations of x and y. So, uh, to make things simple, here are the equations that give you the slope and the y-intercept for our line of best fit, okay? B sub 1, you can think of as m if you want to think of, uh, in terms of y equals mx plus b. The slope, B sub 1, is equal to r, the correlation coefficient, times, times S sub y over S sub x. Now, you can remember this in that it's rise over run, or change in y over change in x, and so it's s sub y over s sub x times the correlation coefficient. Okay, um, the formula from the book about the intercept is b sub 0, which is, if you want to call that um, what you normally call b in your y equals mx plus b, the y-intercept b sub 0 is y bar minus b sub 1 x. So you'll need to find the slope first and plug that in when you find your intercept, okay? Now, if you prefer the y equals mx plus b to memorize it, um, then you can actually use this formula instead and then just solve for b sub zero, okay? You're using x bar y bar and the slope that you just um, found, okay? And by the way, um, r s sub y s sub x, x bar and y bar will all be given to you if you're asked to find this line of best fit by hand. So, um, you probably have noticed that describing things in context is very important in this class, okay? And the slope and the y-intercept are no different, okay? The slope tends to be more important, uh, comes up more frequently than the y-intercept, but um, you should remember, and mark this big in your notes, that the slope 
of a regression line tells us that for every increase of one unit in the explanatory variable, how much of an increase or a decrease we expect there to be in the response variable. Okay, and the y-intercept of a regression line tells us what we expect to be the response variable when the explanatory variable is zero. Okay, um, this may or may not be meaningful based on the context, um, but that's what it means in context. Here's an example of calculating the line of best fit. Okay, wildfires are an ongoing source of concern for several government agencies. Okay, um, and so they've taken data on how many wildfires fires there are um, in years since 1982, and we're going to find a line of best fit through this data. Okay, now um, our formula is B sub 1, which is the slope, is equal to R times S sub Y over S sub X. Okay, the correlation coefficient is negative, and that should not surprise us because um, the scatter plot has a negative slope. So it's negative um, 0.862 times S sub Y, which is 28.342, um, divided by um, S sub X, which is 7.07. .07. And that gives us a slope of negative 3.456, I'll say. Okay. Now, again, what this means in context, okay, because it's a really important piece to keep in mind, is that for every year since 1982, uh, we expect there to be about um, 3.4 or 3.5 fewer fires per year. Okay. And then to find B sub 0, um, the formula was Y bar minus B sub 1 X bar. And Y bar is 114.098. B sub 1 we just found to be minus a negative 3.456, and X bar is 11.5. So um, putting that together, we get a Y intercept of 153.837. Okay, so our line of best fit through this data is fires, I'll put it in context, fires hat, because it's from the model, um, is equal to, and the book always puts the y at first, 153.837 minus 3 point, the slope, 4, 5, 6 times um, years. And these are years since 1982. Here is the line of best fit through the data. Next are regression assumptions and conditions. Okay, um, many of these are the same as we used for correlation. Okay, for example, the quantitative variables condition that both variables should be quantitative. The straight enough condition, meaning um, the scatter plot is roughly straight. Um, it's sometimes easier to see this by looking at a, um, a plot of the residuals called a residual plot. The equal variance assumption, which is a new one, in that the spread throughout the scatter plot around that line of best fit should be, um, shouldn't be more spread out on either side. It should be pretty consistent throughout the graph. And finally, the outlier, con the outlier condition, there shouldn't be any outliers. Again, you can see this sometimes in a residual plot. So let's just talk about what a residual plot is. A residual plot is a scatter plot with the explanatory variable, we're still using the same x variable, but um, on the y-axis we have the residuals. Okay, and there's a way to do this pretty easily on your calculator. Okay, the most important thing to see in a residual plot is nothing. Okay, you don't want any pattern to be there. Um, you want to look like a random scattering of point is what you want to see in a residual plot. Okay, we want it to look like a random scattering of points. Um, the spread should be the same throughout the graph, and there shouldn't be any pattern or any outliers. So um, here are some examples of things you do not want to see. Um, the spread should be the same throughout the data. This is good. Okay? You don't want it to be spreading out um, on one side or the other side. Okay? If it does, um, you will try to re-express the data, which we'll discuss more about in Chapter 10. Okay. Um, again, an outlier in the scatter plot is often easier to see in the residual plot. So seeing a point that's way up by itself um, is a, a measure, an indicator that there's an outlier in the actual scatter plot, even if you can't see it as well.
also um, there being a distinct pattern of a curve in your um, residual plot is a indicator that there's a curve in the actual um, scatter plot. Okay, next the coefficient of determination. Okay, the variation in the residuals is the key to assessing how well the model fits the data. Okay, if there is a lot of variation in the residuals, then it is not a very good model. And if there is very little variation in the residuals, then it is a good model. So measuring, um, you know, how much variation there is in the residuals is a good measure of how good the model fits the data. Okay, it turns out after lots of mathematical calculations in the book that R squared is equal to the fraction of the variation that's in the residuals that is accounted for by the model. And 1 minus R squared is the fraction of the original variation left in the residuals. Okay, And R squared, the correlation, that number squared, is called the correlation, sorry, the coefficient of determination and it's a measure of how well the model fits the scatter plot. Okay, the higher R squared is, the better the model. Here is another example for regression. We'll go through and check the conditions and find the line of best fit um, and talk about what these mean in context. Okay, this is about breakfast cereals. So nutritionalist took about 77 cereals and took their sugar, uh, grams of sugar per serving, and the calories per serving and looked at a scatter plot for those cereals. Okay, um, and we're going to find a line of best fit through this data. Okay, first of all, let's check our conditions. Um, both variables are quantitative. Okay, yes, sugar and grams and calories are both um, quantitative variables. Um, the graph looks straight. I don't see necessarily a, a curve through the data, but we should check our um, residual plot. So here is a residual plot on the next page that I pull it, okay? And it does look like a random scattering of points. There's an equal kind of spread throughout the data. It's not more or less um, at, any, at any one point. So I would say yes. Um, equal variance assumption, we just checked that. Um, yes, that it's pretty consistent throughout the graph. And I don't see any outliers that really stand out. Um, so yes, it checks all those conditions, and let's find our line of best fit using our um, equations. Um, the first one is b sub 1, which is equal to r times s sub y over s sub x. So plugging in those numbers, we get two point four nine nine five. And the y-intercept, b sub 0, is equal to y bar minus b sub 1 x bar. So plugging those numbers in, we get 89.503 get calories. Okay. Now I want to, again, talk about what um, the slope and the y-intercept mean in context. Um, just so you don't forget that the variables for the slope is calories per um, grams of sugar. Okay. Now in context, the slope, this 2.4995 means for every increase of one gram of sugar per serving, I expect there to be an increase of 2.4995 calories um, in per serving in the cereal. Okay. Also, the um, y-intercept means that if there is a cereal that has zero grams of sugar, I expect there to be about um, 89.503 calories per serving in that cereal. Okay. Though, Knowing what those mean in context are important. Okay, so putting them together in our line of best fit, I have calories as the response variable hat is equal to 89.503 plus 2.4995 times the amount of sugar in grams um, per serving. So this video was about linear regression. We talked about what residuals are, which are the difference between the actual value and the predicted value from the model. 
um, the line of best fit is the least squares regression line. Okay, use the formula that we gave you in this video. Okay, and don't forget to check the conditions. And also the coefficient of determination R squared is the percent of the vari variation accounted for by the model. Thank you for watching.